Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we're going to be installing Arch Linux as an updated guide for the end of 2019, which also should be good for the first half of 2020, depending on what changes will eventually come to the Arch Linux installer. But we're not going to be doing it the normal way. Instead, we are going to be using ArchFi just to make it easy on all of you people that are new to Linux, but don't want to take the time to learn and install Arch Linux. In the end, it will still be vanilla Arch, but you just did it with an installer. So let's just get started, shall we? Before we do anything, we need to find the disk that we're going to install to. Just so you know you're installing to the right location, I suggest you unplug any other drive that you're using. This way, you get your own bootloader and you don't have to worry about screwing over Windows. F disk L will show you the information you need. So what this shows is we need to install the SDA and that will be split into the many drives that we need. So EFI swap and well, of course our root drive slash home. Now that we have this information, it'd be a whole lot easier to do the work that we need to do. So let's get to that and let's go grab ArchFi. So the first step we're going to be running through is we're going to be grabbing ArchFi. And it's simple as typing wget space mattmule.github.io slash ArchFi. And you can see my typing is very slow. I apologize. Once you hit enter, it is going to download the file, which is an sh script or a bash script. And depending on your net speed, it should be instant. So we're going to do sh archfi to open the installer. And once we do that, we're going to select our language, which for me is English. We're going to set our keyboard layout, which for me is US. And I hit U to get down there quick. The next, we're going to select dish partition layout after we select nano as our editor. So dish partitions, we're going to set to auto partition GPT slash EFI in hopes that it will give us a swap. All right. And hit yes to wiping all of this because I'm in a VM. All right. So you got to select your drive that you know. And after that, we're going to hit back. We're going to go and select our EFI, which is SDA1. SDA3 is swap, SDA4 is root, and we're going to leave home as none. We will have a home folder once we create a user. So hit yes. Next, we're going to format the devices. The boot needs to be EFI, so FAT32. Next, the swap needs to be a swap. And we're going to select EXT4 for our root folder, our main drive. And after that, we're going to mount everything and we're going to get to work to modifying this. First thing, we're going to select our mirrors and we're going to choose Canada because it's where I am. And we don't need to edit the mirror list, so we're going to install Arch right away. So this, this pack straps installs the base and the kernel. So that's great. And we're going to pause here. And once it's done, we're going to be right back. Now that it's done, we're going to hit enter or any key to continue. I am using VMware, by the way. And now we're going to install the Linux firmware just because, hey, you might need it, right? The Linux firmware does control a lot of things and can help in some cases with some users, so why not? Just install it, ask questions later. And now we're going to configure our Arch Linux. So hit the button and let's get going. First, we're going to set our host name as Arch Linux, our original. Our keyboard layout, we're going to set again just to make sure that it works. We're going to set our locale, so you can hit E to jump down to the E's, as I did here, and I'm going to select EN underscore US. It's uh, for Steam purposes, because sometimes I had issues with selecting the Canadian one. So hit any key to continue, and we're going to set my time. I'm going to select it, set it to Canada and Atlantic, because that's where I am. And we're going to set the hardware clock, so hit yes. Enter your root password. All right, we're going to generate our SF tab. Choose the first one. And after that, choose your bootloader. And for me, usually my bootloader, I end up choosing system MD boot over grub because it's able to survive an SSD swap. 
but we have to edit the mirror list first because it set mine to uh, El Salvador. So I'm going to find the nearest United States one, and we're just going to erase it until we get to the top because I am stubborn, and I just do things the way that other people usually do. Because learning Nano can be hard. I understand that. You know, you have to use keybinds and stuff, so don't worry about it. Hopefully, you know, if you do this too, at least you don't feel as foolish. We all make mistakes, and uh, we tend to do things the hard way. It's part of life. Once that's done, we're going to hit Control X. We're going to hit Yes, and we're going to hit Enter. Our mirror list is now set. So as I said, we're going to go to Bootloader next, <laughs> after we enable our network. And we're going to set it to System MD Boot, just because it's my personal choice and preference. If you're not swapping SSDs, choose Grub. Grub can be stable in some circumstances, so enjoy that. In others, when I unplug my SSD, my bootloader literally goes away. I have to go back into this environment and reinstall it. So I always choose SystemMD. Now that that's done, we're going to hit the back button, which takes me literally ages. And this is an install script to install your desktop. I'm going to show you how it works real quick without installing the desktop because we are going to do things in a way that you still get to learn how to use the terminal somewhat because I don't want you to run into Arch Linux without knowing the install commands for some applications. So just install it, follow the instructions, source forge, hit OK, it will download. Once it's done, it will pop up this menu. So we're going to go down to install eventually. And when we do, I'm going to talk about the different environments uh, real quick. So the different desktop environments are Plasma, which is KDE, it's Windows-like. GNOME, which is not like anything really. XFCE4 is lightweight, so is Cinnamon, and so is LXDE, and so on and so forth. Uh, Deepin is a great environment as well. It's more Mac OS-like if you want to choose that. But for these purposes, we're not going to be using this script to install anything because it can install a lot of applications that you don't actually or won't use at all. All we really need to do is install the base GNOME, which we're going to be leaving to do in just a second. So for me, we're just going to hit back, and we're going to go out of the install script and do something by hand just so I can teach you what to do when you want an application. So hit exit, go back, hit back, hit on mount, and we're back out here. All right. So what you want to do is we're going to find the drives that we need to mount. So you want to type fdisk-l, which I will do eventually. There you go. Make sure you spell it right. I never do. Um, so SDA4 is the one we want. That's our Linux file system. That's where we just installed everything to. So we're going to type mount space slash dev slash SDA4 space slash mount. So that will mount our drive into mount. Next, we're going to do arch space uh, dash true. Sorry. And well, you saw the command in full there. So this, what, what this does is it gets us into our installed environment where we just installed arch and set up everything. And uh, I made a few mistakes here but we'll get to those eventually. So what we're going to be doing now is installing Nano because Arch no longer comes with an editor. Once that's done, I believe we are going to be installing sudo. We're going to need this once we're in the desktop environment. So now we're going to add a user. So user add dash mg users dash capital G wheel storage, power, dash s, slash bin slash bash, and war doc. I know sometimes I say dash, I, I meant something else, I'm sorry. It's a thing. Next, we're going to do password, username, enter your password. So for me, it was war doc. And now we're going to add it, we're going to edit our sudoers. 
Now I messed up here by not adding the S, so learn from my mistakes. It's pseudoers with an S. And we're gonna go down until we find wheel. Now this is what you call on commenting something. So go up to wheel and remove the little hashtag. Once we do, we're gonna hit control X. We're gonna hit Y and hit enter. That will save this. Now we are gonna edit pacman.conf to enable the multi-lib repository, which holds a lot of things. So we're gonna edit the multi-lib. We're gonna go down and we're gonna on comment multi-lib repository. Just like that. We're gonna hit control X, hit Y and hit enter. Then we're gonna update. So we need to go pacman dash capital S Y. Now that that's done, we can install any application we want quickly. So the first thing that we're probably gonna do is install GNOME. So I type out GNOME, then I type out GNOME terminal. The reason being is the pack, the, the normal stock GNOME doesn't come with the terminal. And then I type in GNOME dash tweak dash tools. You're gonna need that to edit your themes and stuff. So you're gonna want that. Just hit yes, don't worry, the install, the download size is only 488 megabytes. The install size is 2.2 gigs. It should take no time at all. And I'm gonna eventually pause it here just so we can cut to the next part, which is enabling the desktop, the display manager. All right, so now we're gonna enable the display manager. System, CTL. Make sure you spell it right. I didn't the first time. Enable GDM. And then we're going to have to reboot into our install environment. So reboot. And we have to hit exit first and then reboot. And there we go. It will immediately open up the Linux boot manager. And then we're going to boot into GNOME. And bam. Enter your password to get in, and we're done. So it's easy. Well, guys, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something about Arch Linux, that there's two methods to install, and I hope that the system runs fast for you and you enjoy Arch because it's definitely an amazing distro. It is new friendly, as you saw. We installed easy without any issues, and... Anybody tells you Arch is not new friendly, you know, they're just not really that smart enough to install Arch themselves, which shows, hence why Manjaro has so many users. Manjaro could be a good distro if it wasn't for security issues and the amount of bloat that they include with the operating system, but maybe it will get there one day. Anyway, if you like the video and this content, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on the video and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. See you next time, guys. Bye.